Welcome or welcome back to the Worsted Willow podcast. My name is Emma and welcome to my little corner of YouTube where I share all of my crafting related things, mostly knitting, some crochet, and starting to do some sewing perhaps. So this is kind of where I share all of my projects and where they're at and what I've done. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> so I was going really consistently weekly podcasts or weekly videos and I just got slammed after the holidays with wedding planning and classes. So it's been about two months, almost two and a half months. So yeah, I'm so excited. I have so much to share. This will probably be one of my longer videos that I've done so far. So I'm really excited. I have a lot of finished objects to go through, um, given that it's been two months and I actually don't have too many whips right now. So I've been doing my knitting, spring cleaning, getting ready to move into some other projects. So yeah, let's just jump in and get started. Oh, one more thing. Um, this is my 10th episode, which is so exciting. And I just want to do a little giveaway to thank you guys for watching my videos and giving me confidence to keep going and to make it to episode 10. I'm so proud of myself for pers like persistently going after it, even if I'm not the most consistent. Um, and just continuing to do this when I have time. So I'll talk more about that in the podcast update section after my projects. So there'll be tags if you just wanted to see the giveaway. But other than that, I will just jump right into my projects. So we'll start with what I'm wearing. Um, and so this is one of my most recent finished objects. It's not my most recent one, but it's one of the two. And so this is my Alpen Glow by Andrea Mallory. Um, I'll also put a picture of it so you can see it uh, in that format, but I'm so happy with how this turned out. This was kind of a surprise knit for me. I watched everyone make it during Rhinebeck and I wanted to make it as well, but I didn't have the capacity to because I was doing this bus knits MCAL and didn't really want to buy yarn for a sweater because I just bought yarn for that. So I never actually ended up doing it. And then I was at knitting group at my local yarn store and I got in this new sport weight color changing yarn and it was named Tanta Emma and my name's Emma. So I had to buy it. And then I was like, what can I do with sport weight color changing yarn? And then I checked and the Alpen Glow with sport weight. So it's done. Um, so the yarn for this is a lot of really fun. So the color changing is Shopal Wool Edition 3, um, which is their sport weight 100% wool. Um, and it's color changing. It like does pinks and purples and like grays. Actually, I think I have I have an extra ball of it somewhere, but I'm not sure exactly where. So we'll skip that. But yeah, so it changes like pinks and yellows and orange and grays and purples. You can see on the sleeve. That's a pretty good representation of what it does. Um, and my sleeves don't match. Um, I just kind of did whatever the yarn did and it turned out really lovely um, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. The mosaic knitting was super fun and a really fun way to like do color work without doing stranded color work. Great break from that. So very, very happy um, with how it turned out. So uh, that's that yarn. The white and the gray are both Movers and Makers, which is a exclusive yarn to Nina Chicago, um, dyed by Creo, um, who has her own stuff, but that's uh, the exclusive to, to Nina. It's the Wicker Park Sport. And the white is Winter on Hoyne, and the gray is Flat Iron Gray. 
and then the purple is the Shibui Silk Cloud. So sad that Shibui is no longer making yarn anymore, but don't be memorialized in the sweater and I have a ton of it left. Um, it really doesn't use that much with it being a lace weight. Um, and it's in the color velvet. So I think it was a um, why can't I remember? Surrey Alpaca Silk Blend. So uh, it's not mohair. The pattern does call for mohair, but that's what this is. So very, very happy with how it turned out. I think I think it's my most impressive finished object. This or my West Nets MCAL. It's my most impressive sweater, I think. Um, I don't know if it'll be the one I wear the most, but I think it's my most impressive. Like when I wear it and I tell people I made it, it's one of the ones I feel like looks less handmade. So yeah, I, I absolutely love it. It's been a great weight. It's not super heavy with it being sport, um, but with it still being wool, it's really warm. Yeah, I've been wearing it a lot. It fits really perfectly. I made no changes to the size, did a little less length because um, I have a shortish torso and I like things to be semi cropped. Um, I did a little less length in both the torso and the arms, um, but everything else is the same. And I love the folded collar. Yeah, I just I really like how it turned out. So that's my Alpen Glow and my first finish object. Um, second finished object, which is my first finished object for the year, was my Juniper Cowl. So this is a crochet pattern by Tony Lipsy of Teal Yarn Crafts, and it was using the Koigu pencil pack. I threw out a lot of labels because I was like adding things to Ravelry and wanting to just like clean house a little bit. My One of the reasons I stopped recording was because my office was a mess so I just needed to declutter and getting rid of labels that were just in my desk drawer was one of the main things. So I got rid of a lot of labels after I added them to Ravelry so if you want to search the yarn um, and I say it too fast or you don't catch exactly what I'm saying it'll all be my Ravelry project pages. But this is with the Koigu pencil pack which is a set of 10 25 gram minis um, in their winter local yarn store day colors. So I think it's actually a pretty similar color palette to what TL Yarncraft used in her initial sample. But it's a crochet puff stitch. Um, oh my gosh, it was so fun to work on. The cowl is super pretty. It's got this nice like little contrast uh, reverse single crochet border. Yeah, um, I love it. I'll put a picture of what it looks like, and it was just a great simple cardigan, or not cardigan, cowl. I'm messing up my C words. Um, and it was a nice little break from knitting. I do really like crochet. I don't like crochet garments as much, but things like cowls and blankets, I really like with crochet, and I like when I can crochet something up pretty quickly because I think it does go a lot quicker than knitting. Um, so this one was a good sort of palette cleanser project right at the beginning of the year. And I'd been wanting to make a project with minis um, for a while and it just had never happened because minis are kind of pricey. So <laughs> that was my first finished object. Um, but yeah. Also, sorry if you guys can hear, but there is loud college students outside, so I don't know what they're doing. Anyways, not too much more on this one, but I really love it, um, and it's really warm, so that's it. My next finished object is the Good Willow, Good Willow Pullover Test Knit for... Um, Allison from Intention Designs. Um, so this, I actually had to finish about a month ago now. Um, it was one that I kind of like picked up and put down a lot because uh, I had another test knit and just some other projects working on and it was knit mostly 
flat to start out with, which I wasn't used to. So, but here is the finished object. And I'll also put a picture in of this one, but it's all over cables. It's got this really lovely little cable, ribbed cable design, and then some color work that was worked flat. Um, and I used a fingering weight held with a lace weight. Um, for mine, you can also do another DK or a fingering held double for it. Um, yeah, this project was super fun. Um, I've knit pretty much all of my sweaters top down in the round, um, either raglan or silk roll yokes. So this was a very different construction than I was used to. So you do, you start the back panel, then you pick up knit the front panel, um, then you join in the round, and then you pick up the sleeves and the sleeves. So it really wasn't like, too difficult. I wasn't doing any seaming or anything. It was still seamless, but yeah, it was completely different. Um, definitely got over my fear of knitting flat with doing the shawl knit along, so that helped a lot. And then learning how to do color work flat was very interesting because you got to keep the yarns on their like individual sides, but then with color work because you're flipping or with working flight you're like flipping back and forth so you actually had to like flip the yarns also which was kind of interesting and I didn't realize that at first um and also like having to make sure that you're purling and keeping the yarns in front I use a Norwegian purl so that was a little bit weird to make sure my floats were still in front of my work I think I switched to working a normal purl for those rows and then actually doing English style for one of the colors to make it a little bit easier um yeah, I'm super happy with how this turned out. I might go back and like add a little length to the body at one point. I think I, I wanted it cropped, but I think it went a little too cropped with it being baggy. It kind of comes up in the back, but that's not on the designer. That's on how I chose to knit it. So, but yeah, so that's my sweater. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. So. That is sweater number two for this podcast. Um, and I have two more. Uh, so the next finished object was a little mini sort of make along me and my friend who I met playing video games. I was talking a lot about crochet and then she was like, I'm going to learn how to crochet too because I was um, an enabler. So she started learning how to crochet and then she's like I'm gonna crochet this card again and I was like that's so funny I want to crochet that card again also so we did a little mini make along um she's working on finishing up hers and I have finished mine but we did the Kima Cardi from TL Yarn Crafts and I don't know how to hold this thing up because it's really heavy and really large um it's very oversized but this is it and I'll put a picture of me wearing it but it is just like the coziest cardigan for walking around the house. Um, just wearing around the house is made with Hue and Me, um, which is an 80 20 acrylic wool blend, kind of like Woolies, um, and it's in the color Desert, so it's this really pretty beige color. And you use a like moss stitch worked flat for the cardigan and do a lot of ribbing. Um, so this one did have seaming. You do everything in panels, seam it all together, and then also this front ribbing band was knit by itself and then seamed on. So there was a lot of seaming. It was all whip stitch seaming, so it was pretty simple. Um, and then there's also pockets. I did actually put the pockets on um, slightly lopsided, um, which kind of bugs me when I look at it as a whole, but... Like I said, I'm not wearing it out, I'm just wearing it in the house, and I don't have too much yarn left, and I'm lazy, and I don't want to take out the one pocket and fix it. I'll keep the yarn around in case I do decide to do that, but I finished this at like 11 o'clock at night, and I just wanted to be done. <laughs> um, so I probably won't go back and re-sew that. 
yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It was a super fun, super quick crochet. Not super quick. The back panel especially. I mean, like, it feels like you're almost crocheting a blanket while you're working on it. But it uses a large hook size. Um, I think it was like a 9 millimeter hook. So it was a longer hook or a larger hook size and that definitely helped make it go quicker. And yeah, I don't have as much to say about this one because it's just a pretty simple cardigan, but it's super cozy and I wear it while I work and when I play video games. And basically anytime I don't have to be wearing real person clothes, I'm wearing this <laughs> um, with like a t-shirt or a cami under it. So, and it literally folds up to the size of a blanket. So warm. I'm throwing all of my projects after I finish talking about them that way because there's a lot of stuff going on over here. So, um, for the last shirt, it's actually the next make along we started doing at Nina's. So, we did the winter one, which was the Easy B sweater, and we just started a new one, and it is the Spring Sorrel by Wool and Pine Designs. I finished it already. Um, I didn't mean to. I meant to work on another project, but I was like, I'm gonna finish the yoke and split for sleeves. And then I just kept going. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I only had the ribbing and the sleeves left to do, and it's short sleeved, it's cropped, it's fitted, and I'm kind of a small person. So once I got to that point, like I was like, oh, I'm gonna finish this. <laughs> and it'll just be done. So I have other projects I can work during the no long time and my friends are still making it so it'll be still really cool to have all of ours like at the same time but yeah so this is my spring sorrel and it uses a dip stitch pattern on the yoke this is absolutely gorgeous um, I'll put a picture in as well so you can see it uh, this is again on the movers and makers um, which has apparently been one of my favorites recently. Uh, and this is on their Noble Square DK base on the color hot dog stand. I did have the one for this one because I literally just finished it like two days ago. So, um, so their Noble Square DK, I don't know if I can show it on here, but it's like a chain construction. It's not a normal twisted ply, it's a chain ply. Um, which is really interesting to work with. Plus, this is also 84% of pal alpaca, 8% merino, 8% polyamide. So it's like a completely different base to what I'm normally using. So it's so soft and drapey, which I thought would be really nice for a t-shirt. So it's not like, and it's a little less heavy than like a pure wool would be. Not that alpaca is that much cooler but it's a little bit cooler than what wool would be so i'm really happy with how it turned out and i love this golden yellow color i went through like a golden yellow color phase um like the second summer of the pandemic like so 2021 um i started playing animal crossing and then i like wanted everything yellow it was like a cute little spring summer cozy game vibe um so i'm this is throwing me back to it. I have some yellow glasses that I wear with it, and it's really cute. So I'll probably wear this one on, like, the next podcast. But obviously now I have a lot of sweaters I could be wearing on the podcast. Um, but yeah, so I haven't even shown my make-along friends yet that I finished it. So I'll see them either this coming Thursday or Saturday, and then I'll get to show them. Um, and they're going to be like, why did you finish it already? And I'll be like, I don't know. So, it's so pretty. Okay, I'm back. I, my camera turned off because it was overheating. So, I'm back. Um, yeah, so that was my spring swirl. And on to the last finished object slash half whip. Um, so, this is technically a finished object and technically not. Um, so I've been making some perfect fit socks 
for my fiance. I finished one pair. This is the first half of the second pair, and I still have all this yarn. I don't think I'm gonna get a full three pairs out of this yarn. It's looking like I'll get five socks, which I know is an odd number, but since they're all gonna be made exactly the same, he's gonna mix and match them anyway, so it doesn't hurt to have an extra sock. Um, yeah, so these are using the Perfect Fit formula from Nitty Natty through, through her course, and they are DK weight because that's his favorite weight of socks in the Shopo edition two, I want to say. Their DK weight is 75-25 wool nylon, which is really hard to find for DK weight, so I'm very happy with that. Um, it's in their color Domino, so it's like this black, white, and gray. Um, and then you can see like the transition here. Um, and it's so fun. They're his favorite socks so far. Um, and it uses the Fish Lips Kiss heel, which is my favorite heel to work. Um, but yeah, these are super easy to make. I pretty much have his little formula memorized and I just have it as like notes in my phone at this point. So I don't need to go back and reference a pattern anymore. If I'm out and about, I literally, oh, you can't see that. This is all I need to get his socks made. So I don't have one cast on right now because I finished this one off and just haven't cast on a new one because I've been not really traveling. Um, I like to have it for like going to church and driving and things like that. So, but uh, the travel I did this past weekend was along the train so I could bring a larger project. Those are pretty standard. Um, I've made a lot of socks for Daniel, so don't need to go into those too in depth. And he likes the shorties. Um, I think it's about eight rows for the legs because of the decreases to do, and then um, five rows of ribbing. And that gives a pretty good shorty height. But yeah, so that's all of my finished objects and I've kind of like I said already half transitioned into whips so my next whip um is probably going to be my last sweater for this season I'm definitely going to do tops but I'm going to do more tank tops um camis things like that um which I'll talk more about in uh, updates and plans um but this is a sweater I cast on in December and then I made it through the start of it, got really frustrated because of how like the increases and like stitch pattern was working. So I put it down for a while. And then uh, it also uses the dip stitch pattern. So I was working on the spring for sorrel. I finally got the like rhythm of the dip stitch pattern. And so I came back to it. And yeah, it's going a lot smoother so far. I've made it through like all the hardest parts already. Um, and that is my cargo. I hope this is actually the front my cargo sweater. So this um, is obviously a fully dip stitch sweater. It's by uh, Rebecca Clow of Crea Bea. Uh, this was her um, first sweater um, and I'm absolutely in love with it. This is such a dense squishy fabric with the dip stitches. Uh, it's actually a smaller dip stitch than the spring swirl was. The spring swirl you had to dip five rows down and this one you only dip three rows down. So it's a little bit easier. Um, you don't have as many like relief rows but it is an easier dip stitch to do. Um, I'm using, it's a DK weight but I'm using a fingering held with a lace weight so I have this Cascade Yarns Refine. Um, so it's 100% recycled materials, it's 75% wool, 20% nylon, and 5% viscose. Um, and this is their color 18. I just call it beige. Um, it's got more of like a gray, cooler tone to it um, compared to the Surrey Alpaca that I'm using, which is Surrey Stratus by Plymouth Yarn. This is 68% Surrey. 32% uh, nylon, and this is the color taupe. So, this one has a bit more of a warmer tone, this one has more of a cooler tone, but overall, I mean, when you look at it, it has like a slightly heathered look, but it's not too different. Like, they 
they balance each other well. So I just did the sleeve split and I finished like the first couple repeats afterwards. Um, you can see I only have like one dip stitch after the armhole, so I've done technically now two pattern repeats since splitting. And yeah, it's going much smoother. Um, I meant to work on this one more instead of the spring sorrel, but the spring sorrel just started like flying off my needles and I worked, I did such a big chunk of this that I was like, I need like kind of a break from the dip stitch because it's starting to hurt my wrist a little bit, that whole like dipping motion like this. It's hurting my wrist a little bit. So I took a break from it and worked on the spring sorrel. And yeah, so this is my main project now. Um, so it's probably what I'll be bringing with to knitting group so I can suffer through the dip stitch with all of my friends. Um, I'm getting close to the point where the dip stitch is relaxing, but it's still a little tedious. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know. It's not that bad. It was really bad at first, and it's not that bad, but it's definitely not my favorite stitch pattern, but I absolutely love how it looks and feels. So. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to finish this before it's warm enough to where it's currently snowing outside in Chicago, but it's been off and on raining. It's been closer to like the mid 30s to mid 40s, and I think it's about to start sticking more in that mid 40s. So I don't know if I'll actually really get a chance to wear this. So I have, I'm in no rush to finish it right at this moment, um, and I'm just kind of taking it as it goes. I mean, I started it and then put it aside for like two and a half months. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. I think it will be a staple next year once I finish it. I'm really excited to have it because I have a beige textured sweater that I wear a lot now, but it's just a Target brand sweatshirt and it's mostly cotton, so it's not even that warm. Um, and I think this one is going to be such a good replacement for it. And who knows, maybe I'll make a lot more of this. Um, Probably not. I think I'm going to go more for like textured rib sweaters next year, but we'll see. I'm also, I'm on my second ball of Surrey and almost done with my first ball of the fingering weight. The fingering weight is a little bit larger. It's 100 grams, but it gives actually 500 yards. So it's a little bit, a little bit yard, larger than a normal fingering weight. But yeah, this is my main project. Um, happy with how that's going now. So my last whip is kind of um, not like a main whip. Um, it's kind of one I go to when I just need a break from other projects. Um, and that is my uh, scra scrappy granny stripe blanket. So this is how much I have now. There was like a good week and a half, two weeks where this was like all I wanted to work on. And so I put in, obviously you can see a lot of time into it. Um, so yeah, so I added actually all of the fingering weight scraps I have left. Um, so this was all of my fingering weight scraps and you can even see I had two scraps left of this one. Um, and then I actually got some minis to start adding in. Um, and so I started doing that. And I I just love the weight of this blanket. It's really thin, really cozy, very like flexible. It's not like a heavy blanket to wear on top of you. And I'm really excited for that because I'm not like a weighted blanket fan. Um, I have anxiety. I know a lot of people talk about it being really comforting for anxiety. I have never felt that. I always feel like I can't breathe and like I'm getting like claustrophobic with it on. So. This one I think will be really nice. I'm very excited for this blanket. Um, yeah, it's just a granny stitch. I've been following the original formula was uh, by, I think, Lucy of Attic 84. I'm following the notes for the modifications that Nitty Natty has on her blanket. So if you want to know exactly how I um, counted mine out and how many grams you need for the stripes, you can look that up at Nitty Natty. I will say Nitty Natty is doing like two rows a stripe uh, for all of hers. I'm just going till I run out of yarn. So I'm gonna probably try to break up this big like mini section a little bit because with it being um, 
all exactly the same. They all end up being about like this four to five row. If you can see before that, I have a lot of like one row or like not even a full row colors in there. So I think I might try to split those up a little bit, but right now they're the only like fingering weight scraps I have. So I need to finish some other fingering weight stuff and then add it in. Um, I could probably also add sport weight to this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet. So this is my my blanket. And that kind of leads me into acquisitions. I was thinking about this and I was like, I don't think I have too much, but then as I've gone through these projects, I've kind of thought more and more. So obviously I had all the yarn for my projects. I had all I can't remember if I talked about this yarn or not. I think I did actually talk about the yarn from Alpen Glow before. Um, I've talked about the Cargill yarn, but I bought all the Hue and Me for the Kima. I bought the um, Noble Square DK for the Spring Sorrel. Um, I talked about the Goodwillow and I talked about the Juniper Cowl. Um, I also got all these minis um, from Wall and Company in Elgin, Illinois. They have this whole wall of hedgehog minis, hedgehog fibers minis, and so I just was like, I need to do some more for my blanket, so I'm just gonna go there and get a bunch of minis. So I can tell you what I've already used and then which ones I've gotten. So this grayish black one here is called Hawk. It's Hawk. This bluish one here, this blue orangey vibrant one is called Wave. And this purple one, purple, yellow, blue, is called Amnesia, which is actually a hedgehog or a Woolen Company exclusive one. We got this beautiful red, gray, and orange one. Oh, I mean, just hedgehog has the most crazy, gorgeous colors. Um, and this is called Phoenix. I got 10 minis in total, so <laughs> bear with me for this for a minute. Um, I got this gorgeous white one with flecks of green, yellow, and gray. And this one is called Pine. Uh, this one. I may want like a full skein of this one at one point because this is gorgeous. Just imagine like a little ribbed cami tank top in this color. It's called Dijon. Um, this green one just has a little bit of variation. This one's called Sage, um, which I'm really excited about because my wedding colors are Sage. So I probably will get a full skein of this at one point. I really want to knit my fiance socks to wear for his wedding, for our wedding. Um, to match the bridesmaids, so I think I'm gonna get this color with that. This gorgeous half like teal, half speckled color, um, and this one is called Brine. I also just love all the one word names that are so, so beautiful. This purple, blue and pink one called Sparrow, and then lastly this dark gray and like vibrant. This one is called Goblin. I believe this one was also exclusive to Wool & Company. So those are all the minis I got and I'm just slowly working through them. I really like working on this blanket like while listening to audiobooks or watching reality TV, um, especially if I'm like by myself. I feel like it's a really good like relaxing relaxing like meditative project to work on. Um, another acquisition is I think I mentioned this at the end of my last video but I signed up for the Fanco Farblers Taylor Swift Eras Monthly Club. Um, so I got in, I've gotten the January and the February one. She sends them out at the end of the month so you get them at the beginning of the next month. So I got January's at the beginning of February and I just got the February one recently. Um, so if you haven't, if you're in the club and you haven't gotten yours, I think most people should have them by now because it's about a week and a half after you would have received them. Um, 
but I'm going to show them. So uh, the first one is this gorgeous deep maroon color, obviously from the song Maroon. <laughs> and it's called The Rubies That I Gave Up. And it's, it's gorgeous. I haven't decided on the project. I'm going to be getting 12 full skeins of fingering weight yarn for this. And so I haven't decided on a project yet. So if you have any like monthly club projects, um, I know some people were looking at the, the striped cardigan that um, Andrea Mallory did. Uh, I think that's like DK weight, so it would be held double um, just because of her song Cardigan. That's one idea. I've also tried to look at some blanket patterns and things like that. So I might do some like massive granny squares and just join them together. I think that could be pretty fun. Um, so this is maroon. And then February's was uh, the Archer um, cover album. So there was like an album released just for the Archer song. And this is based on that. And um, it just goes so well together. I think it's going to end up being a fade. I know Fangirl Fibers likes to do fades. And so I think this is going to be a fade as well. Very excited to get more of these. I'll probably wait for a few of them before I start doing any um, anything massive with that. Yeah, so this was another acquisition. Uh, I also got this massive <laughs> bag to hold my granny stripe blanket in. Uh, it's like heavy duty canvas, which is really nice. And there's a few different pockets inside. There's a pocket with a zipper in front back here. And then some more pockets over here. Um, and this is by Magner out of Athens, Georgia. They had a lot of different sizes, but I wanted the massive one. So this sits under my like side table and it's just ready to go and bring with me. And then when we play board games um, on the weeknights, on the weekends, I can also bring it with me for that. So love that. Uh, my other acquisition I don't have right now, but I just ordered my first yarn advent calendar, which I'm so excited for. Uh, I started knitting and crocheting um, 2021 towards the end of the year. So obviously like I kind of missed all the advent calendar stuff and I wasn't really working with fingering weight too much at that point. So I didn't get it one that one year. Last year, I also just kind of like wasn't quite on Instagram as much yet, so I kind of missed all the announcements since they're really early in the year. Okay, so I don't remember what I was talking about because my camera did the overheated again. But anyways, so I think I was talking about my advent calendar. So yeah, so I missed out. I didn't get an advent calendar last year, the year before, and I just saw that Nicole, Nicole from Hugh Loco posted her advent calendar order so I ordered her advent calendar um, she does these really gorgeous fade advent calendars um, I saw last year's uh, through TL yarn crafts it was absolutely stunning and this year the theme is oxidize um, and just from the pictures she put there was a lot of like bright teals and corals and like really cool like rusty sort of vibes so I'm super excited for it um, I don't know what project I'm going to do yet. I haven't even thought that far ahead, but I know it was going to go quickly. I think there's only about 80 to 100 in every single base. Um, so and she has four different bases, so it's not like that available. And I saw it only like two hours after she posted it. And I was like, I like messaged my fiance and I was like, hey, so I know this is really pricey, but I really want it. Um, and I got the... I can't remember if I got the 80 20 or the single ply. Um, I think I actually ended up with the single ply because the 80 20 was a little bit less yardage. Um, not that it really matters, I think it was like 10 yards less, but um, I went with the single ply because I think I'll do either a shawl or a blanket. I'm definitely not going to do like socks or anything with it, so I'm not worried about missing the nylon. Um, and I always love how single ply looks when it's hand dyed. I think it holds the dye really well and looks absolutely gorgeous. So very, very excited for that. Very excited to have my first advent calendar. Um, 
and that's going to be coming after all of my like big things this year so i'm going to have a lot of free time to actually work on that during the holiday season so very excited for it um yeah, that was kind of a last minute purchase and I didn't expect to quite have that this uh, far in advance. I knew they did them early, but I was expecting to purchase them in the summer. So probably why I missed it last year. But yeah, that's all of my acquisitions. So that's kind of wrapping up all my like project and like knitting specific talk. Um, so obviously, if you, I'll, I'm going to do some podcast updates and then life stuff but if you just want to hear about my projects this is going to be the wrap up of that so for podcast up, um updates uh and like future plans um obviously it's been two almost two and a half months since my last podcast and i am so sorry for that uh i just i don't know what happened it was one of those things where like I just kept putting it off and then it suddenly was like so long since I had done it and then I was like do I even want to keep doing it you know like I just had like all crisis about it I kind of there was a few things that kind of played into it so obviously with the holidays I did a ton of knitting and then I kind of like lost my knitting mojo for a few weeks and all I really worked on was like this massive blanket um and so like I lost my knitting mojo I reorganized my entire office and I got this beautiful little corner set up um so yeah I can take some pictures and show it also but like I've moved all my cube storage to make like a little corner partially for filming um partially also to just open up the room a little bit more uh but I never finished like fully organizing everything so my closet was like a mess and even spilling out into the room a little bit it's a pretty small room there was just like stuff everywhere and yeah it was just like overwhelming to try to think about like sitting on the floor and bringing out all my projects and bringing out all the lighting and just getting fully set up for a podcast because it is a decent amount of work um and I'm one of those people where if stuff's messy my anxiety and like motivation goes completely out the window so I don't know it was overwhelming um and I didn't want to sit down and do that and I couldn't get myself to organize either because I didn't know where to put anything um, so finally a couple weeks ago, or like last week, I got my family, I was like so overwhelmed by just how messy the house was in general, and I like sat down and was like, to my fiance, he didn't actually help me clean that much, like he, um, was there if I needed anything, but you know, it's my space and my stuff, so he didn't know exactly where I would want things, but he just like stayed by me and like helped give me the motivation, um. If you've ever been on like ADHD TikTok or done any research with that, uh, it's often called like body doubling, um, and that's really helpful for me. So, not diagnosed with ADHD, but a lot of it applies. So, <laughs> um, but yeah. And then, yeah, it just got to a point where I was like, ah, oh, it's been like a month and a half, almost two months, and I was like, I've just been so tired it's been so gray and like gloomy and I was just like completely unmotivated and my classes started and was taking up a lot of my time and I was like do I want to do it like it is a lot of time and like a lot of effort to like record and then edit and like post and everything um but ultimately I do love it um I just I'm gonna try to scale it back for a little bit while I'm in this much busier season of my life during the holidays and like my last class I was I had a lot more free time um the class was a little less intensive I was further out from my wedding so I had less to do with that but just there was a lot of stuff going on plus um I had just started going to my knitting group and now I'm more involved with that and that is um they actually have an open stitching night on Thursdays and the knitting group on Saturdays so that's like a couple days out of the week um and we had some other stuff so I don't know, I just like all of a sudden got really busy and I just had to kind of figure out my schedule again and figure out how it was going to fit in and not overwhelm myself. So I'm thinking bi-weekly podcast, but it could be monthly at this point. Um, and there'll probably be no extra videos just because I don't have the creative mental space right now just with being so exhausted with everything else to kind of come up with those videos. But I'm hoping you know, this summer or next fall when I have a little bit more time 
and mental energy that I can start doing this again because they were really fun and I do enjoy it. So, but uh, bear with me if it's a little um, sporadic <laughs> for the next few months because it's going to be crazy over here. So, um, I apologize because I was like so on schedule and on track with all of that and then I just like dropped out out of nowhere. So, that is totally my bad. Um, it was completely unintentional and I gave no updates. So, yeah. Um, Yeah, so going forward, bi-weekly, somewhere between two weeks to a month, maybe some weeks I'll do every week if I have a lot of progress on stuff. Um, I don't really have many projects going right now, so I don't know what that'll look like. I do have some yarn planned out for some tank tops I want to start making um, for summer, and then also some yarn I've had sitting aside for a shawl, um, like a three-color fade shawl. I started the flat iron shawl with that and it was almost a whip in today's video because then I realized my gauge was like massively wrong. Um, like 10 to 15 stitches off from what her four inch gauge was. So I was getting like completely different size and like much denser stitch. Uh, so I don't know because I would have to go at least up a full hook size if not more. Um, and there's some other patterns I was looking at. So I'm undecided on that, but I do want to make a shawl. I need to start my wedding shawl at one point. And, yeah, just don't have too many, like, projects completely in the works or fleshed out yet. But that's that. Um, the other update with this podcast is I hit episode 10, which is really exciting. Um, and I think there was just, like, a lot of, I don't know, I knew I wanted to do a giveaway and there was like a lot of planning and like mental space with that as well until I kept pushing off the podcast because I wanted to make sure I did that with this episode because I'm really excited to hit 10. I When I started, I didn't know if I was going to get this far. Um, so I want to do a little yarn giveaway. Um, I got this yarn on sale, um, but that doesn't make it any less special. Um, but I just saw it and it was on sale and I was like, this yarn is gorgeous and needs to have a good home. I didn't have any plans for it, and I think it would be a great little um, giveaway yarn, especially with it being spring. So this is the yarn. Uh, it's Yoshi and Lucy. I'm not sure exactly where they're out of, but I got this at a yarn store in Detroit. Um, and it's 100% Superwash Merino. It's a single ply yarn. Um, it's the base Merino, Maria, and it's called Blossoms. And I just think this is a gorgeous little spring colorway. And so there's two of them. The giveaway will only be open to um, U.S. residents um, just because of shipping costs. Um, this is coming out of my own pocket. So I want to, like, thank you guys for supporting me. But um, I also have a lot of expenditures for myself. So, uh be US only. Um, yeah. Uh, for entering, um, comment uh, what you're most looking forward to knitting for the spring season because it's really gloomy here and I want to know what you guys are knitting for spring to kind of like brighten it up um, and need some inspiration right now. Um, but yeah, just, it's a little thank you for sticking with me while I figure out scheduling, consistency, video types. Um, yeah, just, just a little thank you to you guys. Uh, I love seeing all your comments, even if I don't reply to them for two months because I'm overwhelmed. Um, and I, I still read them and I still look at them and I will reply to them as I'm working on editing this video. Um, so yeah, I just appreciate all of you guys and, um, Excited to start making videos semi-regularly <laughs> again. Um, so yeah, so the, I'll announce the winners in my next podcast, which will hopefully be in two weeks. But could be up to a month. So, and then hopefully I'll get this yarn right in time for something beautiful for spring. Yeah, so that is all I have for podcast updates for life. I've kind of touched on a lot of this. 
classes started again, which has been crazy. Wedding planning has ramping up. We're in the last six months until the wedding, so that's super exciting, but also crazy busy with planning now. Um, work has been super hectic. There's a lot of people kind of out right now. Got some new people starting, so that's been um, wild. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks recently. I finished the Bridgerton series finally. Just the main eight books. I didn't read any of the novellas or like side stories. Um, I've also been reading through Akatar. I'm currently on Nesta's book. So I finished the main series uh, and the novella and now I'm on Nesta's book which is the fourth one, A Court of Silver Flames. Um, just the whole last few books go into like this whole war type scenario and it's been a little bit harder to read through so I've been kind of slowly making my way through that and then for tv shows I binged all of the perfect match recently on Netflix which was great I, I loved it um if you've watched any of the Netflix reality shows it was really funny it was kind of like a bachelor in paradise all-star situation um they just brought a bunch of people from their other Netflix series and put them together in a Love Island format. Um, it was crazy. Lots of drama. Great reality show to binge. There was only 12 episodes, so it wasn't very long. Um, I watched all of that because this past week my fiance was out of town for a conference. <laughs> so I just was knitting on my spring sorrel and watching The Perfect Match. Um, no wonder I finished that so quickly. Um, other exciting uh, personal stuff, um, actually more knitting related, but I put it in life. Um, I signed up to go to Stitch Up Chicago, which is a Friday, Saturday, and kind of Sunday, um, like, I, I want to say more retreat. It's not really a conference, um, but there's some, like, afternoon tea, brunch, yarn tasting, where they have a bunch of indie dyers. Um, and you can like try out and like sample some of the yarns, um, dinners, open stitching, just hanging out and being with other makers. So I'm so excited for that. I signed up for the whole weekend since I'll be able to go to it pretty easily with biking around and they're partnered with my local yarn store. So some of the events are even held there and I'm really excited for that. So and last with life is I started picking up sewing some more, so hopefully you guys will start seeing some of those projects. But yeah, that was a long episode and my camera's about to die, so I'll leave it at that. But thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, don't forget to comment down below for the yarn giveaway, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!